everyone. Welcome to the channel. This is the third part of the AWS Cloud Resume Challenge. And today I'll be covering the API portion of the challenge and also the DynamoDB, which we'll use as our database. So this is where we build that views functionality where you can see how many viewers you have had on your site. So before starting with the next part of the challenges, I wanted to cover some errors that you might have experienced with the previous part of the challenge where we did the S3 and the CloudFront distribution for our S3 bucket. There was a certain portion of the video that was cut out and that was related to the origin access control. So I'm gonna show you what you might have experienced and you might have been confused by where to get the OAC policy and how to copy it. So I'm going to show you now. So logging into my AWS console, here we have the S3 dashboard and my bucket is reshub cloud dash resume. And if I go into the properties, make sure the static website hosting is turned off. So that is first thing that you need to confirm, right? And then moving on, you have to go to your cloud front distribution. So with the CloudFront distribution, you will have to first create the distribution and the OAC before you can generate the policy that you have to copy over to your S3 bucket. So what do I mean by that? So in your origin domain, type in your S3 bucket. So resume, so mine is reshub cloud resume challenge S3, right? And then for the origin access, we have to make it origin access control because that's what's recommended. So here, this was mentioned in the second part of the challenge, but what I missed is the policy doesn't get created as soon as you hit save. You'll have to come back to copy the policy. So let's enter some description, you know, S3 resume challenge and then let's hit create. So you can see the control setting with name already exists. So I'll just rename that to two. In my case, it exists because, you know, I have the other OAC that is being utilized by the other CloudFront distribution. And you can see you must update the S3 bucket policy. And here it says CloudFront will provide you the policy statement after creating the distribution. So what you have to do is go down and hit create distribution. And now if you go into origins and click on the origin that you just created, click on edit. And if you go to OAC setting, you can see now you can copy the policy itself. So now you will copy this policy and go to your S3 bucket in permissions tab, you'll go down here, click on edit and since I have mine copied, I will paste that here. So that is how you have to perform that step in regards to the OAC access policy and how it gets created after the CloudFront distribution has been created. And then you go into the CloudFront distribution again and copy the policy and paste it in S3. I hope that helps you with the error and the instructions uh, for setting up CloudFront distribution with S3 bucket. And now we can move on to the next part, which is part three of the Cloud Resume Challenge. So let me share my screen here. And as you can see, we already are covered up until the sixth in the part two. So if you haven't checked out, go check out part one and two. And this one will be doing, uh, we have to set up the database to store the views value. And then we also have to set up the API yet. So we won't call the database directly from our website. We'll use Lambda as the API that we will call through our website to fetch the DynamoDB values. So let's start with the database. I have my AWS console here, right? So I went into DynamoDB and I'm in the North Virginia region. Um, you can pick whatever region works for you or is closest to you, right? So in tables, you'll see we have zero tables right now. So what I'll do is click on create table. So 
this will allow us to create a table. I'll name this as cloud resume dash test, since this will be my test table. For the partition key, you can put an ID. Some people use capital ID or like uppercase I and D. Uh, I'll go with the lowercase I and D and that's what our partition key will be. And for the rest of the settings, you can leave them to default. Um, you can add a tag saying, like the last videos we had where, you know, I used the key as project and called it cloud resume challenge. This just makes it easy to see resources that are associated to this tag. So let's click on create table. So you can see it's creating the table now and we'll wait for it to create the table. So as you can see, the table has been created and let's click on the table and click on actions and click on explore items. And you'll see there is zero item right now. What we wanna do is have a views item that keeps updating as our users visit. So let's go back to the DynamoDB uh, table here and let's click on the action now and click on create item. So this will allow you to create an item. So for the partition key, let's name, let's give the ID a value of one and we'll add a new attribute and as the views are number, so let's pick number here and we'll call this lowercase views as the attribute name and the values Let's make it one and let's click on create item. So now you can see we have a item with ID one and views value one. So this is what we'll use to store our views in. The next part of the challenge is the API functionality. Since we don't want to fetch the data directly from DynoDB, what we'll do is we'll create a Lambda function that does it for us. In your AWS console, I have opened a new window and I am in the Lambda dashboard. You can do that by typing in Lambda and clicking the Lambda service. So you can see I have a test function that I created last year. So just ignore that. And what we'll do is we'll create a new one. We'll name this uh, Cloud Resume Test API, right? And the runtime, you can pick Node.js. I'll go with Python since that's what my go-to language is. So I'll go and pick Python 3.8, which is the latest version that Lambda supports. And for the rest of the uh, settings for the architecture, you can leave x86. Um, don't change the execution role. If you have created a role already for your Lambda function, go ahead and pick existing role. For me, I let it create a new role. For advanced settings, what I want you to do is enable function URLs. So this is a new functionality. Earlier when I worked with towards this cloud resume challenge, you would have to set up uh, the API gateway in order to access uh, your Lambda function through you know, a URL. Now you can have function URLs. So this will give you a public URL that you can invoke your Lambda function through. And auth type, I'll keep it none, but which means anybody can call my API now. So what we'll do later, you'll see is we'll configure cores, which stands for cross origin resource sharing. And with that, we will only whitelist our own domain. So in my case, you know, my uh, site is on resume.reshop.cloud. That's the only URL I'll whitelist. And that's the only URL that will be able to fetch data from my API. So after these both settings checked in, let's click on create function. Okay, so our function has been created, right? This is the function URL that you have been given. And if you click on this, you'll see what I mean. So the this is the default Python function that you get after you create a Lambda function. So if I Go to that URL, you'll see it'll say hello from Lambda. Let me zoom in. So it says hello from Lambda, and you can see that's what this Python code does. 
So what I'll do now is I'll change this to call our Dynamo DB to get the views count. 